Hey peeps, welcome back to my behind the scenes video series where the hair is big and the shirts are funky. Today we're talking about episode two. Now, spoiler alert, okay, if you haven't seen it and you don't want anything to be ruined, uh, then go watch the second episode and then you can come back to this. As a matter of fact, watch the whole season and then come back to these behind the scenes videos. It's just gonna be a lot easier for you. Anyway, diving right in. This episode, I think, is great for answering a lot of the questions that we raised in the pilot. One of the biggest ones that we got, especially since we released the pilot well before the rest of the series, is how do they afford that big house? How does Pete have that house? Well, uh, it's it's a house, not an apartment, first off. And we answer it by saying that uh, Pete's parents retired and moved down to Florida. Uh, the mortgage was paid off. And instead of renting an apartment, Pete decided to just stay in the house and take over the utilities. Uh, his character, he can afford that uh, as, a, as a character. So um, we have that to give us this uh, this room to let this series really breathe. So. Nothing wild or, or crazy there. Um, it is also a huge personal growth episode for both of the characters. So letting go of control and expanding your horizons for Pete and coming more into adulthood and, and like respectability and, you know, putting your, your adult pants on and, and uh, making some decisions and moving forward for Polly. So um, that's the, the meat and potatoes of the episode. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, as we uh, go in and, and get there, Polly is having this montage of going through the house and really enjoying everything that it has to offer. I actually threw in uh, some some pictures of uh, my, my actual family. So you see kind of a nice shot of uh, me and my mom from when I was super young and my grandmother is actually in the background of that picture as well. So uh, check out that little uh, Easter egg there. I also like littered like a bunch of uh, like childhood pictures in the bookcase. When Pete comes home uh, afterwards, um, you can maybe barely see it, but I just thought if there's a, a chance that somebody is uh, looking in like the background for any of these things, they'll see that we um, added a little production value by throwing those things in there. Um, so moving forward, I, I think this episode is another great uh, opportunity that we had to showcase like how unique and diverse New York is. Uh, especially within Pete's, you know, friend group and, and some of the people that were invited. Obviously, that's not everybody he knows, but in terms of like ethnicity and age and style and like weirdness and, and all that stuff, I mean, people are all over the place. So we introduced a lot of like funky characters and they were all, you know, friends of ours and stuff like that who wanted to come together and, and shoot this like fun thing and, and just be silly with us. So um, I think the episode's great for that too. Um, this moment with uh, the character Izzy uh, I think is great because so often ethnic people have uh, this sense that we have to kind of like put on a persona um, to just like make our lives easier when dealing with like white people uh, at times I don't want to speak for everybody but um, I've talked about this with like a bunch of people and it's like kind of a real thing where we whatever our like qualities are to the group that we belong with we might you know bump that up a little bit just to because because it's easier than explaining everything and having to you know uh prove something to people or whatever so you can get kind of get caught up in that so i wanted to kind of throw that in there a little bit and then kind of have it be like you know you know izzy it's okay um you know she's cool you don't have to put you know do all that for her you know she's she's woke enough um so i thought that was an interesting moment uh, I want to give a shout out to Kevin Woods once again um, for crushing the character that he brings here. He plays PC, um, which uh, also Pete, and he is so not that like broy douchey guy, but like he just brought it, man. Like he brought that shirt himself with like the, the solo cups in there. He was like improvising a bunch of lines that we I I was really trying not to like crack up. Uh, watching, you know, acting with him in that scene. But I mean, he brought it. Uh, Kevin's a great guy. And um, and I hope that goes on his demo reel or something or gets him, books him like bigger work because he, he brought it that day. Super, super funny. Um, also, moving on to the next character. So Lucas, played by Chadwick Sutton, um, that's actually his band that was like playing when Pete walks in and, and when we do that like montage later. So um, they're all in a band called Arc, Arc Metal. And uh, they decided to come on board. They brought their actual instruments. They brought like their dope vests that were made by Sonny Angel, the uh, the, the band creator. Um, 
he actually made those and it smokes like like we have in that montage or whatever so i was super grateful that they came along to uh help make this this party and this whole situation as outrageous as possible and what's crazier than like a metal band performing in your living room um so thank you to arc metal and uh, and chad for crushing it there um and it's their music that is playing right in the beginning of uh, of Peas in a Pod, I believe, and uh, in that episode, and in the uh, montage at the end. That's their band and Chadwick actually singing there. So um, check them out. They got uh, I've been to a few of their shows. Like they put on a dope show, lasers and cool stuff. Um, let's see. So many of the like little moments in this episode were totally improvised, or we just kind of came up with it on the spot. Uh, the homeless man uh, and him popping up left and right in the episode uh, was totally like not in the script. Um, the giraffe in that like back room scene where Pete and Polly are really arguing, getting at it, and then Pete gets kicked out. Um, that was right on the spot and played by our assistant director, uh, Alexandra. Um, so she was she was happy to throw on that giraffe costume. Which, if you didn't notice, I used that same costume in the theme song for each of the episodes. So that's just like a cost, like a like a onesie that Stephanie has in her basement, full of like costumes and weird props and stuff. And so uh, we kind of double dipped there. Um, so uh, if you didn't catch that, there you go. Um, also, there were so many things to like cut around and like that we couldn't use that I would have loved like for this episode. Like we had somebody in a dinosaur onesie like walking around like she was like on some kind of crazy drug. Like just know everybody in this party is either drunk, high or, you know, out of their minds. All of the above for some of those people. So uh, it's, it's as wild as we can get it without, uh, you know, going completely off the rails. Um, now when we get to like you know the outside and you know pete's screaming here some of you uh hopefully notice that uh we have a little streetcar named desire uh you know homage there you know the marlon brando marlon brando stella moment um and who better than stephanie's mom uh suzanne winland to be the angry neighbor to tell me to shut the hell up so uh, i just think that's a, like a super funny moment every time i watch that i i laugh because she's so good at just being like would you Shut the hell up. <laughs> uh, much like they do in Queens, if you're too loud. Um, and then we get to the porch where the two peas um, are kind of hashing it out. And this is where we have like our family matters, you know, full house moment. It's cheesy and, you know, got like the little cheesy music underneath and all that stuff. But hey, it's like the nougaty center that grounds the episode. And you really find out where they're both coming from here. And it makes you realize that this is not just like all fun and games and like silly gags and laughs and stuff like that. These characters are, are real, uh, real people dealing with real things. And hopefully it humanizes um, them and people that look like us. Um, so you understand that like we're all kind of going through like the same issues. Um, and I think it's a really beautiful moment before we dive right back into like the wildness of the, the party and whatnot. Um, so when that comes in, we're doing this like, you know, chug, you know, drink off situation. That was a really wild time to shoot. And I just think it's hilarious that like in, uh, you know, not only does Polly beat Pete in the drink off, but she drinks like 10 beers in the time that Pete drinks like three fourths of one. Uh, and then he's hammered and, you know, she's, she's fine, but then continues to like have a great time. Like it's, uh, that's a funny visual to me. And, uh, you know, I hope y'all enjoyed that as well. And then we sort of wrap it up after this wild montage of, uh, of shots, which trust me, we had loads and loads of stuff to choose from from there. Um, we have the peas taking a page out of each other's books, um, where Pete's like totally wiling out and like letting go in a way that he probably never has. And uh, Polly's being responsible, cleaning up the party, making sure everybody's leaving and, uh, you know, and that we get those tweezers back from from Mitzi Akaha's character, uh, Tara, and she crushed that role as well, the really weird, awkward things. Watch her throughout the episode as well. You see her doing all kinds of weird things here and there throughout that um, those party scenes. Um, so yeah, those are my favorite moments and like the things that stand out to me for uh, this episode. I hope you all enjoy and keep watching and I'll catch you on tomorrow's where we talk about episode three. I don't work here. <laughs>